we're going to look at the proof of cosine of alpha plus beta and how it breaks down to the cosine of alpha um, times the cosine of beta minus the sine of alpha times the cosine oh, times the sine of beta. Okay, we're going to use the same diagram that we did in our last video with the proof of the sine video. This time, I made it a little bit larger so I can actually fit everything in. And um, first, you know, if we're going to prove this, we should establish, well, where in this diagram is alpha and beta? Well, let's, let's choose alpha to be over here. That'll be helpful in the proof. And then beta over here. So this is beta and this is alpha. And altogether, that angle is alpha plus beta. And what does that equal? Well, the cosine refers to our adjacent side over our, our hypotenuse. And the triangle here is triangle A, B, C. So the adjacent side is going to be A, C. Right, this side down here. And the hypotenuse is going to be equal to A, B. And if we look at this, just like we did in the last proof, we can think about are there other ways of writing A, C? Well, yes, we could write AF, this whole line segment over here, and then subtracting DE, right? Just line segment DE. And that is all over AB. So AF minus a DE, that is AC. We're just writing it in a different way. And we could rewrite this as the a AF over AB minus DE over AB. And these, again, these ratios, if you're thinking about the next steps, it's not, it's not very helpful to have AF over AB, right? They're not really in a triangle or connected in a way that's useful. And DE over, over AB are also not in triangles that are useful. So, so let's think about AF, right? If we want to use AF, we should try it to maybe either EF or AB because they're in a right triangle together. So I'm going to relate it to AE. And I'm going to do that by multiplying both numerator and denominator by AE, because that's the same thing as multiplying by 1, right? AF times AE over AB times the same thing. That means we're multiplying and dividing by the same thing. Does not change the term. So that is this term right here, right? That's identical to this right here. Minus, we have DE over AB. Well, look at that, right? DE over AB, not very helpful, but it would be nice to match DE with BE, the hypotenuse of triangle BDE, right? Leading this side to this hypotenuse. So I'm going to multiply both numerator and denominator by BE because that is the same thing as also multiplying by 1. I'm not changing the value of my expression. And this chunk right here is the same thing as this term, right? I haven't changed anything yet. So now I'm going to switch these terms around. I'm going to switch the order using the commutative property. And that will actually get me pretty close to what I need, which is cosine of alpha plus beta equals AF over AE. I'm going to swap the order of these two terms down here times AE over AB. And same thing here, minus DE, swapping the denominator terms, over BE times BE over AB. And this is great because we actually have everything we need now for our identity except for one term. And I'm not going to write the cosine of alpha plus beta because I will run out of room. So I'm just going to rewrite this term. AF over AE. What is that? Well, that is AF's right here. AE is the hypotenuse, and if alpha is right here, AF is the adjacent side to alpha, and AE is the hypotenuse of triangle AEF. So this is just the cosine of alpha. That's the first part of our identity. Next, AE over AB. What's that? Well, here's AE. Here's AB, and here's a angle beta. So that's the cosine of angle beta. Why? Because, oh, angle beta is right here. Excuse me, angle beta is right here. AE is the adjacent side, and AB is the hypotenuse. And if you remember our trig functions, SOHCAHTOA, right? 
cosine ka is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's the cosine of, of b. Minus, well, what do we have over here? be over ab, right? Here's be over ab. That's the opposite and hypotenuse to, to the sine of, to angle beta. So that's the sine of beta, right? Sine Sokotoa opposite over hypotenuse. That's BE over AB. So this term right here is just going to be equal to the sine of beta. And now we just need to figure out, well, what's this term equal to? And, and as a guide, we can realize that it should relate somehow to the sine of theta. And I think what's useful to observe is that DE, right, line DE, if we extend it, it's perpendicular to BC. And AF is, this line down here, is also perpendicular to the same line. So DE and, and AF, these two lines are parallel to each other, which means that this line, this transversal cutting between them, forms alternate interior angles. So this angle right here equals alpha. And, well, what does this angle over here equal? Well, if this green angle is 90 degree angle plus alpha plus something equals equals 180, then this is equal to 180, the total, minus the 90 degrees we have and minus the alpha. And that is equal to, well, 180 minus 90, what's that? That's 90 degrees. So this is just 90 minus alpha. So let me rewrite that. So this angle right here is 90 minus alpha which means that if this is 90 degrees right here, and this is 90 minus alpha, this angle has to be alpha. And that's because, well, I'm taking the 180 degrees from the triangle, subtracting the 90 that we already have over here, and then subtracting the 90 minus alpha, oops, 90 minus alpha that we have in this angle. 180 minus 90 is 90, minus 90, right, which is zero, minus a minus alpha, which is plus alpha. So this angle right here is plus alpha. How, how does that help us? Well, we're looking for the sine of alpha, and this, and this angle right here, well, that would be equal to DE over the opposite over BE, right? That's what the sine of alpha is equal to, and that's exactly what we have right here. This is just DE over BE. So this term right here is just equal to the sine of alpha, and there's our identity. And I like this, these proofs because in the in the first in the first example we used we broke down BD into EF plus opportunity oh, to work down BC this line segment right here into EF plus BD, and that kind of guided our whole identity for the sine of alpha plus beta, and brought the sum here as the middle sign. But in this proof. We look at uh, side AC equaling AF, this total term, total length, minus DE, which ends up giving us this minus sign in here. So I, I love that the way we look at these proofs just right away establishes the difference between the, the cosine of alpha plus beta and the sine of alpha plus beta. And the, and they're pretty remarkable to me because without this, this funky looking diagram, I'm, I'm not sure how I go about doing this, but I, I just I love what these diagrams actually enable us to prove these identities in fairly simple ways. Really cool stuff.